Greetings, greetings, everyone. I am sending you my warmest greetings. I'm Linda Hartling. I'm a founding member and a director of Human Dignity and Humiliation Studies, which primarily means that I work in direct service and support of all of the wonderful work that you are doing. And I work very closely with Evelyn Linder and Uli Spalta. I'm really thrilled to be able to join you through technology in this way. I'm broadcasting from Portland, Oregon, which is on the west coast of the United States, and I'm so thankful and honored to be able to participate in this conference through this video. I want to extend my warmest gratitude to the host of our meeting who made this program possible. It's because of you and your efforts that we can take this work out into the world. So please accept my appreciation from our entire network. And I also want to thank all of you who have made it possible to have this meeting. It's great that you are together. And I hope you know that even though I'm not in the room, I am with you in spirit. So greetings to everyone. Just as we like to get to know all of you, we like everyone to get to know the work of the Human Dignity Humiliation Studies Network. So this little video is designed to talk about who we are, what we do, and how we do it. We hope it'll allow people to think about how they might engage the network so they can build their ideas in a supportive community. Who are we? Well, we're a creative, collaborative community. A global fellowship of like-minded scholars, researchers, artists, practitioners, and others dedicated to ending cycles of humiliation and building equal dignity in the world. From the outside, some people might think that we function like a typical top-down hierarchy. But we think of ourselves as a network. So rather than top-down, we believe in practicing ripple out, inviting people to join us in these conversations about the importance of dignity. Those of us who take on added leadership responsibility like to think of ourselves as guardians and gardeners of the work. We try to create the best conditions for people from all backgrounds, from all experiences, to make a contribution to our efforts. None of us in the network get paid for our work. We donate our time. So you can be sure that we are not driven by the love of power, money, or prestige. This is truly a labor of love. I think the best word for describing our efforts comes from Monty Chaudhry, one of our dear members, who described us as a digna community. We have more than a thousand personally invited members throughout the world. We have nearly 300 distinguished and highly esteemed board members on our global advisory board. And we have more than 5,000 supporters that are on our email list. Over the last decade, we've become the leading source of information on humiliation studies more than any other institution, even Harvard. What do we do? We're dedicated to turning ideas into action. By practicing an extreme lean green but not mean approach to working together. Early on, we recognized that we weren't interested in ego building or empire building or even building a brick and mortar building. Rather, we wanted to be a true network. We like to think of ourselves as the trunk of a sturdy tree. And we invite people around the world to build a branch on that tree using their own ideas, using their own initiatives. And we support the building of that branch. But even beyond that, we know and we invite people to build their own tree and connect to us. You see these redwood trees, these giants of the woods, they say that these trees grow so large because they are interconnected at their roots. We want to be interconnected and support the work of people who are doing amazing efforts around the world. 
Now, some people wonder why we don't charge membership fees or registration fees. Well, we feel that it is important to find a way to sustain the work that isn't totally focused on raising more money. So therefore, we play, uh, pay the bills by engaging in shared responsibility, pooling our resources, and contributing according to our abilities and our wishes. That has been successful for the last decade. This is our extreme lean green, but not mean. And we believe it is a more dignifying approach to growing the work. We have two meetings a year, one in New York City at Columbia University. That's the workshop on transforming humiliation and violent conflict. And by the way, all of you are invited to, to join us this coming December for this workshop. In addition to the workshop, we have a meeting every year at a different international location because we feel it's so important to bring many, many voices to the table to discuss these ideas. And we're so thrilled to be in South Africa. In addition to our website and the individual research projects and other kinds of projects, action projects going on with the Human Dignity Humiliation Studies Network, we have two large initiatives. One is the World Dignity University Initiative. This is an initiative designed to bring more education about dignity into the world by providing online learning experiences. And we started this initiative by building a video library of ideas. And some of you might want to think about contributing a video to our library of ideas. Here's a little example of a video that's made by Ranghil Nilsson and Evelyn Linder. Tell me, why do you like this word? Dignity so much. Dignity for me is the, a word that, that expresses the best of humanity. It expresses a respect for, and it's, it's, it expresses love for each other, for humanity. Uh, it, it is the opposite of abuse of uh, humiliation, of um, violation. Uh, of course, uh, dignity uh, is the wor first word in the first sentence of the first article of the Human Rights Convention, namely, every human being is born equal in dignity and rights. So that's a sample of our growing video library of ideas, and we invite you to think about contributing. In addition to the World Dignity University Initiative, we have a wonderful publication branch of our work that's led by Uli Spalthoff. In an amazing short amount of time, he's published, well, here are eight examples of the books he's published. I know he has more, and I'm sure he'll tell you about it, but the Dignity Press Project is designed to bring ideas about issues of dignity and distribute them throughout the world. So some of you may have publications you would like to contribute to the Dignity Press Project. What do we do as a community? Well, we do everything we can to walk the talk of equal dignity in every step of our work. And that means our meetings are not like the typical top-down expert lecture presentation format. Rather than presentations, we focus on conversation, dialogues in the spirit of equal dignity, dialogues that allow people to bring out everyone's best ideas, that emphasize appreciative inquiry and curiosity, where we can be enriched by our differences and learning from each other, even when we disagree. We can engage in this dialogue in a spirit of equal dignity. So we can create a body of knowledge that is connected knowing, that is enriched by the understanding and insight and experience of people throughout the world. Francisco Gomez de Matos, who is an incredible peace linguist in our community, gave us a word for the approach that we have to hosting meetings. He called these meetings Dignologues.
Finally, I want to give my greetings to Evelyn Lindner, our courageous founding president. She's a social scientist with degrees in medicine and psychology. She sees the whole world as her home and all of you as part of her family. With your help, we can build a world without humiliation that dignifies us all. So greetings, greetings to everyone. I am with you as spirit. I'm looking forward to learning about the amazing experience you have. I know you'll have a great conference. Oh, God, he...